Um, yeah, I think from my side, I played a pretty good match. I Going into it, I was extremely nervous because um, I've never played on Ash. I've never faced Serena, and I knew that it would be the crowd would be tough. Um, so from the first ball, I was happy that you know I felt comfortable, and from then on, it was kind of instinct. Okay, congratulations again, Hans Craig. Hello, Craig Gabriel, Nine Radio. Um, how did you get through that match? Um, considering what you've just said about all those firsts, did you apply the Novak rule that you were talking about the other day? Um, I did. I mean, I I used that, and I also just really blocked it out as much as I could. It did get to me a few times um, internally, um, and I I tried not. I mean, I didn't take it personally because I I mean I would be cheering for Serena too if if I wasn't playing her, um, but it was definitely not easy. But there was no other way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What was your sort of key to prepare for all those unknowns and, and the intensity? And I think we were sort of asking about it in your previous press conference. Just sort of what did you know about that environment you're going to walk into and how were you preparing yourself to respond to it? I'd say the biggest thing was just to block out all the noise. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I tried to keep it simple. It's just a t another tennis match for me. Um, I, I'm happy to be in the third round and, and have a great opportunity to play on Arthur Ashe. It's what I dream of when I was a kid. And just not make it bigger than it is because everyone else already made it huge. Um, and from the first moment I walked on court, you know, I, I didn't really look around much. I, yeah, I was completely in my own little bubble. I did, yeah. I, uh... I like the quote. I I, um, I felt pressure from myself, from just you know where I where I'm at in my career. I, I feel like I belong here now, and and that's why I feel I expect myself to perform well in these circumstances. So when I saw that, I yeah, it just felt right. Name and affiliation, also when uh, you ask your question, Matt. Go right ahead. You had that strange series of events at Wimbledon where your father kept not extending your reservation long enough and you had to tell him, like, can you please have faith in me to keep winning? Was there anything, did you talk to him the last couple of days in the lead up to this? Did oh, you, he's not anymore under, like, my agent's taking care of it now. She she got my rooms booked. So, yeah, it's, uh, he's not in charge this time. Okay. But was it, did you have conversations with him, but, or, or did you get any messages from him about before this match of, um, about how to approach it? Oh, from like, else uh, not about the rooms, just in general? Just in general. Um, my dad um, wanted to, like, emphasize the fact that, you know, it, it is a little, I mean, it's Serena's moment, but he wanted to make, make me aware that, for me, it should be my moment, you know, what what it's going to mean to me and just to focus on that and that I should completely try to enjoy myself as much as I can because, um, I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. How do you come down the next couple of days from such an emotional high and get yourself back up for what's going to be another formidable opponent next round? Uh, it's already kind of in the past. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy I won tonight, but um, I think I'm pretty good at already. I actually think a little bit too too quickly about the next one, so uh, I don't. Ne I never feel like I have a problem with that. So I have more of an issue chilling out and taking it easy the next day. Yeah, um, I played her in Washington, and she played great. I mean, she's been playing really well. I. She's coming off of two titles and hits the ball really big. I mean, bigger than most girls on tour. So I'm going to have to, you know, be ready. And I'll have to ask my coach to just hit a little harder in warm-ups because he's a little bit of a pusher. Okay. <laughs> in the back. Hi, uh, Tom Hamilton from ESPN. I was just wondering, right at the end of the match, when you're sitting there watching Serena do her sort of her farewell interview, your first words were, I think it was something like, I'm feeling really sorry. Could you just talk me through, through those sort of emotions in that moment? Like, you must have had a massive win, but also you're seeing everything else going on around you as well. Yeah, it, probably the most conflictive I've ever felt after a win, because during the match I was so 
eager to win. I mean, I, I wanted to win as much as the next person um, because I, I didn't look at her like, oh, Serena, her last, you know, tournament. Um, but then when it ended, it felt, you know, it just it almost didn't feel right. Like, and, and when she started talking about her family and everything, I just... Yeah, it, it, I, I got emotional because I, I can relate to having a strong bond with your family and, and not when she said that, you know, she wouldn't be there if it wasn't for them. I relate to that a lot. So, um, yeah, just the whole moment after was was just tough to handle a little, little bit. Court. Thank you. Um, just what does this mean, this win mean to you? I know that you're thinking forward and it's already in the past, but that was a, a pretty special performance under the circumstances and at a very you know, high pressure, and you, you stood up to it quite well. To me, it just means that no matter how I feel before, which was very nervous and, and a little bit, I, I don't like to say it, but a little bit fearful, you know, of, of things going really badly out there because I'm playing Serena and, and I don't know how, like I have faith in myself, but at the same time I have a little bit of doubt. And I know that that's just coming from that b bad side of Isla that always has some doubt, like every normal person. And it was just about channeling the positive sides in me because I do have a lot of faith in myself at the end of the day and, and belief and I know I've put in the work over the last few months and and deep down I, I, I know I deserve to have that shot like I had tonight. And it was just about channeling those emotions instead of the ones that are, you know, the bad Isla. Reem. The match points in that last game, I'm just wondering how did that play out for you? Were you aware how many they were or were you so focused that you didn't even... How many were there? Six. Six. I won it on the sixth one. Yeah. Um, I stopped counting after the second. Um, and you know what? I, I, every match point she saved, it was all credit to her. I didn't feel like I did much wrong. And I had this weird, like, calmness because I felt like if I get broken, I mean, so what? You know, um, Serena broke me. Wow, I'm... Like I'm just like the next person that she broke when she's down five one. I know she, she can come up with, she comes up with her best tennis when she's in the most trouble. So I didn't feel like I'm, uh, you know, choking it away or something. I I thought I was getting outplayed on those match points. So I I just kept calm and, um, and actually took a page of her book that I I know Serena one time said that she only thinks about the next point. So I if I'm playing her, I might use her tactic. Stuart. Stuart Miller for the Sydney Morning Herald. Speaking of only think about the next point, you were down 5-2 in the second set, and even though you lost it, you really made her work. There was one game that was 15 minutes long where you saved multiple points where she had set point. How important was that for you, both in giving you belief going into the third set, but also knowing that you were you know, draining her, her energy a bit by really making her work for every single point there? You know, it just I know how much I hate playing players that don't give up anything so freely and that you have to work for every point. I, I hate playing players like that. And I uh, that's, I think, what's been my strength lately is I, I try to have players beat me instead of me. You know, I can have a, a few bad mistakes, but just not make it um, like more than it should be. Um, and I think that's what separates the top and the rest. So I, I, my mentality was just that, you know, at the end of the day, it was just one break. So I, I broke her before and I thought that on 5-3, nobody, it, I mean, if, you, if she can serve it out, like for great serves, credit, you know, great. We go into the third set. But I just uh, kept believing that there's no reason why I can't come back. And three games are sound maybe like a lot, but they're not, they're quick. It can be quick. If you could just turn your attention to the monitor, we're going to go down under. Erin from News Corps, you are live. Hi, thank you. Congratulations, Isla. Thank I you. just wanted to ask, you've said a few times now that even when you're up 5-1 in that final set, you didn't quite think you had it won. What went through your head when you realized you had won it? Um... As soon as I won, I was like, oh, my gosh. But then right away, I, I just felt like it was Serena's moment. Um, so it wasn't the usual, I think, emotion that I'd have after a big win. Um, 
yeah, so it was just a little odd what I felt. Okay. Time for a couple more. One, two. Tell us a little bit more about what impact Serena's had on your career and also have you had a chance to check your phone to hear from friends and family about how you went tonight? Uh, I mean, Serena to me is, um, you know, I, I growing up I didn't really have idols, but Serena and Venus were just so good that I, I looked up to them the most, I'd say. And what always drew me to them was their bond with their family and how much like the togetherness and they always spoke about that um like it was so important to them and I can relate to that because I'm I'm very close with my family and I I wouldn't be where I am without them um so from a young age I I remember seeing her with them with their dad and and thinking you know that's kind of like my story a little bit so just the fact that you know you don't you don't have to have anything other than supportive family, a dream, and, and just will and passion and love for the game to make it. Uh, and not just make it, but she's what she's achieved is, is absolutely incredible. I don't even know if it's ever going to be you know, repeated, at least while I'm still around. So um, I still have years left in me, and I, I want to you know, dream bigger than I, than I have so far because that's what she, to me, that's what she embodies. Okay, David, and then we'll give Craig the last question. David. Hi, David Kane, Tennis.com. Your name is probably going to be the answer in a lot of trivia questions in the next couple of years. Who was the last person to beat Serena Williams? Obviously, you aspire to bigger and greater things, but what do you make of playing this part in tennis history? I mean, no one's going to pronounce my name right. <laughs> 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 so that's going to suck. Um... But, yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever been part of tennis history, so that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, I do feel a little bit like the villain. Um, and, and I, like I said, in Cincinnati, I really did want to play Serena before she retired. But, yeah, I mean, if I was the loser today, I'd probably be really sad. So I don't want to say I'm sad, but, yeah, it just conflicted a little bit. Okay. Craig, last question, please. I know you are just talking about that you've already moved on to the next match and... Know, the, the ups and downs of this one. Where, when you consider the, the, the standard of play that the, the two of you had and the whole situation, would you say that this was the biggest match of your life? The, 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 the even even with the win. I don't know, because um, that win in Wimbledon against Cornet was something. Like what I felt in that match was something I haven't felt in my career, like the emotions. And um, so this ranks in a different category, you know, it's just something I'll never forget for different reasons. And um, yeah, I'm not going to like, I'm going to keep them separate. But those two, I think, are, are going to be at the top for a while.